Good evening, good evening. Good evening, everyone. This is your host, Rodney Kirkwood, and we are excited about uh, each and every one of you being on this call on this evening. This is our uh, call for th our Thursday evening, and we usually on these calls uh, discuss our relationship uh, topics, and this is going to be a very exciting one this evening because we're dealing with a topic that sometimes, uh, in most cases, is taboo. It's it's a uh, it's a topic that uh, you know, not too many people want to talk about. They want to know a lot about it, but they don't really want to talk too much of it. But we uh, dare on this evening to uh, come before you with the topic of sex. And we're going to talk about that word, sex. That that three letter word that is, uh, uh, you know, it's taboo, but at the same time, it's very powerful. And so we're going to deal with that this evening because we know sex is one thing that, uh, first of all, sex is the reason why we're all here. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the reason why we're here. Are, are you sure? So, uh, yeah, well, I, I believe I am, Colonel. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we just evolved. You know, out of a out of a big bang, or you know, a, yeah, you know, really, big bang theory. You know, I think yeah. when God said uh, put man and woman together and said, you know, be fruitful and multiply, multiply, you know, yeah, and multiply. And the fruitful part is what we're gonna talk about, being fruitful. <laughs> but sometimes <laughs> the act, the act of being fruitful, uh, it, it 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 causes some damages, and I think we're gonna deal. With, with those areas of evening. We're going we're gonna to deal with the highs uh, concerning sex, but also we're definitely going to deal with the lows of it. So this is going to be a an exciting call, and I'm glad to have uh, three um, men tonight who's going to share their perspectives. They're going to share their thoughts on this topic called sex. And so first, I want to allow these men to introduce uh, themselves. Uh, first, uh, we have uh, Mr. Jermaine Conley. Uh, how you doing, sir? I'm doing good, sir. Excited. All right. All right. All right. So we're, Jermaine Conley is one of our uh, 12 kings. And first of all, before we go uh, to our next uh, panelist, you know, 12 kings is a uh, it's a group of, of 12 men, 12 ordinary men that God has called together to participate in a book project. And then that book project will be 12 chapters uh, from all, uh, from each individual man, given their testimony, uh, given some truths, uh, and being transparent about their life experiences and, and, and sharing uh, whatever God has laid on our hearts to share. And so we're excited about the book. It will uh, be available in the first week of March, and we are looking forward to that time where the book will be released. But in the meantime, it's just amazing what God has been doing uh, with us 12 Kings. You know, he's uh, touched our hearts to get these conference calls together and, and, you know, just allowed us to do some form of ministry while we are, uh, you know, getting the book finalized. So again, we thank you for everyone who has supported us. Uh, you can find us on uh, Facebook at um, 12 Kings and Their Treasure. And uh, on there, you know, we send in our words of encouragement, and this is where the play, that's the page where we create our uh, conferencing uh, events uh, as the one that you are partaking on uh, this evening. And so we just thank everyone for your support and all that has been taking place thus far. So, and again, we just uh, introduce Mr. Jermaine Connell, and I also want to introduce uh, another uh, king, uh, a great man, uh, Mr. Dave Wiseman. How you, Dave? Hey, sir. How you doing? Man, I'm good, man. I'm good. I, hey, I hope you, you know, I, I hope you got your got your got your notes. I, I know you got about five or ten page dissertation. Uh, nah, nah, you man. gonna do this, man? <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> I know, man. I know you. You can write the book on this subject tonight. I know. Uh, no, <laughs> this is PG, PG form for me today. PG okay, 13. Uh, okay, uh, okay, all right. All right. Yeah. 
go with that. But hey, hey, thank you for being on tonight. Okay, no problem. Appreciate that. We appreciate that. And last but not least, the man uh, who Arnold. says he is the second best golfer in history. <laughs> In history now, <laughs> Mr. Oh, Keith, Mr. Keith Colonel Murphy, how you doing, man? What's up, Rod Dog? How you doing? Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm good. I see you. I'm glad I, I see you. I see you started out with the youngest, and then you end up with somebody that's four years older than Black Pepper. Uh, well, hey, man, uh, I, you know what? That was, just, that was just amazing how that happened because I, it wasn't planned. It ain't like I just wrote it down and said, I'm going to Jermaine yeah, and then yeah, Dave right. and then, you know, I, I ain't doing it like that, man. That was, that was the whole shit did that, bro. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we glad, hey, we're glad you're on, Turner. We, we know that you have uh, some wisdom to share with us on this evening. And we want to, um, before we get into the call, uh, it callers. If there's anybody on the line that already has a question, already have a comment that they are burning uh, to share on the call this evening, uh, you can hit star six on your phone, and you will be placed in a caller queue. And we will get to you as soon as possible. We're not going to wait to the end of the call. We want to try to get you in before, um, you know, just throughout the call. We want to interact with everyone that we can. And, and, and anybody, again, if you want to uh, share something on this evening, you got a question or a comment, just hit star six on your phone and uh, you will be placed in a uh, question and answer queue and we will give with you ASAP. ASAP. All right. All right. So now, fellas, the word is set. S E X that that three letter word that is pretty powerful. Powerful. And so um we wanna we want to deal with that. We want to deal with that word this evening because you know, it's 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 a hot topic. It Hollywood is promoting it in all kind of ways, we can see that. But we, we have the world's version of sex, but we also have sex when it comes to the Word of God. And I want to say that we want to present our perspectives, um, our commentary, and also, you know, our truths and even testimonies concerning this topic of sex on this evening from a God perspective. We want God to be in this because there's so much, so so much, so many damaging things are taking place with sex today. You know, we see it happening with young children. Um, and like I say, just all over the place. So this 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 topic is it just so broad, and that's why we got a part one on tonight because. It's just so much to deal with, so much to deal with. So we're just going to we just we're just going to talk about what we can talk about on this evening, and allow these men to um, you know give what God has given them concerning this topic. So we first want to talk to Mr. Jermaine Condon. We want him to come first, and Jermaine, when it comes to sex, what do you have to give us? And, or what commentary or what truths you want to share with those of us on the line on this evening. So we just go ahead and this 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 start this thing off and then we, we we'll go from there. And again, anybody who has questions, just hit star six on your phone and you definitely be placed into a call key. So Jermaine, go ahead, sir. Um first of all I wanna just thank everybody who's on the call. Thank you guys for your support. Thank you guys for listening in. Uh, this is a pretty, pretty heavy and hot topic. Uh, we can obviously see just just within our world and within society, uh, sex, as far as the world's concerned, is not something that they're afraid to push, they're afraid to talk about. But 
um, we have to remember from the perspective that we have, from a kingdom perspective and a God perspective, sex is something that is a created thing. So it's not something that is to be worshipped as we see in the world. Because if we were to worship it, then we kind of neglect the creator versus the created thing. And um, something that I want to say first off is where purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. So it's, it's really good that we're, start, that we're bringing up this topic and we're talking about it because if I don't really know where sex fits in or, or how it's supposed to work or, or what, it's supposed to, what it's supposed to be like, then my chances of using it in the right way are really slim. And that's just with, with anything. And within the context of sex, we have to recognize, like I said earlier, it's a created thing. So since God created this thing, what did he create it for? What did he, where did he create it to be used? Where, where, does, where does it best fit within one's life? And when we look at uh, scriptures, I believe there are three reasons that we can see or at least three, I'm sure there may be more, but at least three that I've come across, is he created it for procreation, mm-hmm. to, to create, have a godly legacy, to uh, bear fruit, be fruitful and multiply, to bring forth children and grandchildren, and you see generations coming forth so that people fill the earth. Uh, he also created it for pleasure. Um, God's not into us being just these stuck-up, boring, robotic people who have no sense of personality, we have no sense of pleasure or fun. There's a sense of fun that God wants us to have with it. Uh, if you read the, the Song of Solomon, you can see where there was a, a real sensual <coughs> affection that Solomon had for his wife, that he had for his lady, and that his lady had for him. So it's okay to have that, that sensuality, but within the context that God made it for, which is, as, as we can see in Scripture, within marriage, which leads me to my, my third reason, which is protection. Uh, in Scripture, mm-hmm. God says to let every man have his own wife, and in turn let every wife have her own husband. And having that protection mechanism, that, that inti- the intimacy that they share together mm-hmm. in, in the secrecy and the privacy of their bed chambers. So we see we see these different reasons that God has laid out for sex to be there and the reason that he was so gung ho about it being within these contexts is because of the, the ramifications that it can cause on us if if it's not handled in the right way. You know, imagine ha- handing a twelve gauge shotgun to a three or four year old. You got all this power all, all, all this potential, all this massive energy given to somebody who's not only not ready for it, but also not within the right context. Because no matter how, how we look at a three- or four-year-old, just by sheer fact of their immaturity and the fact that they're three or four, we know that they aren't ready to hold something that powerful. Mm-hmm. They're not ready to hold it until they rise up in maturity. They're not ready to hold it until there are certain boundaries that are brought into their life, until they're taught certain things. And it's the same thing um, with sex. There are certain boundaries that need to be put in. There are certain things that I need to learn and things that I need to know before I'm ready to be handed such a powerful tool that helps me in communicating love to the one person that God would have me give myself to and not to bring any shame or, or trying to bash any of us for anything that may have happened within our past or anything because we all have a story. But just talking about it from the context of how God originally intended for it to be, how God originally intended sex to be the intimate tool that we use. But above us, sex being a tool for intimacy, Information is also a way of communicating intimacy. And information being a way of communicating intimacy, that's where it should start above, above trying to have sex with someone. I need to be trying to get to know someone. Uh, in Scripture, we can mm. see where 
that's kind of used interchangeably where sex and to know someone are used interchangeably. But it's not only in the sense of knowing them physically, but knowing them on an emotional level, knowing mm -hmm. them in who they are, knowing them in their personality set, and letting that be my main focus versus me just trying to get to the physical part and just trying to get with them in bed. Mm -hmm. So that's Amen. my deal. That's, that's good. That's good, Jermaine, uh, and, and great, great information you have given us. And you know, I, I want to hit on one particular area um, that you that you brought out. So, well, actually, I'm gonna ask you a question. Let me, let me just do it like that. You know, you you, you stated that um, getting to know someone, getting to know someone. Why 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 is it why is it hard? In this day and time we're living in, in the, in the getting to know stage, where it's not just the communication. When it should it should be the communication. It should be getting to know that person's mind, getting to know that person's ways. You know that that verbal communication, wanting to know. You know well, what 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 type of person am I dealing with? You know in the in that getting to know stage, why is it so easy? that sex is involved with the getting to know. Why, 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 do you, why, do you, why, why is it easy for sex to be involved in that particular area of saying that, hey, you know, I, I, this should be on my list of getting to know? But why, why do you think it's so important for people to feel that in that getting to know stage, I need to know how you are sexually as well? Um, because when the, if you are dating for the real purpose, which I believe dating should be, which is to really see if you're compatible with someone mm -hmm. or life pattern and seeing if y'all could do life together, that that's going to be an area that is just a part of your life. There, there should be a, a, just a, re, a regular pattern of, of sex. That's, that's a part of a husband and wife life. So that conversation needs to come up because you guys need to know how it is that one receives pleasure, how one receives from each other. Because sex, sex is a ministry. Sex okay. is a ministry between husband and wife where when the two come together, they are focused on not themselves but each other because mm -hmm. it's Sex between husband and wife is as it should be. It's love motivated, and love is a giver. Yeah. There you so go. if we're going to call it love making, then that means I'm a giver in that activity. So I mm -hmm. have to know. I have to know my lady. I have to know what it is that will bring her the greatest pleasure. What it is that will bring her the fulfillment that should come from, from this activity. And therefore, by by definition, if I'm gonna call it love making, then I'm a giver. And if I'm a giver, I got to know all. I got to get all my information together. Mm -hmm. Probably is, but if within our uh, society, we try to push to that too too heavy. We'll push to that part way too soon, and mm -hmm. we don't even know if we're compatible with this other person. But we just want to get with them like that, and we want to just have sex for the sake of. Uh, getting rid of the the intense flesh feelings that we feel and the fact that we're just hot for each other in the moment. But when we mm -hmm. respond like that in the moment, we, we tend to neglect those ramifications that happen once you do that. Because now that you've done that, now you've got all these series of, of decisions and series of, of somewhat backlash that may come. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just sheer consequence of, of choices. We we reap what we sow. Mm -hmm. so all that to say that that reason is you you got to get just laying everything out and and laying it out within God's pattern is not to shut you up and to keep you from having fun and all of this and that, but it's designed with a specific purpose in mind. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a specific reason. There's a good reason that it's behind it. All things work together for the good. Anything yeah. that he has, it is not something that is uh, designed to 
uh, withhold us or restrain us. It's mm-hmm. designed to thrust us forward to get you into a position where you can start passing on uh, blessing within your family lineage, get you into a position where uh, certain things are no longer taboo and you can really have open discussion and we really can start to shed light on this. And in shedding light, we shed knowledge, and in shedding knowledge, we really begin to expose our enemy and bring isolation to a stop. And in bringing isolation to a stop, that's when Mm -hmm. God's purpose can really be released and we can really start seeing what it was originally intended to be like. And the original intention has to be way more wonderful and marvelous than what we see today. It just has to be. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. 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 I like that, man. Thank you. Thank you, Jermaine, for uh, giving us what uh, God has placed on your heart. And you brought some great information there. You kind of laid the foundation of the original intent of sex, the original intent of it. So um, thank you, man. I pre- appreciate that. Appreciate that. Uh, again, callers, if you have a question or a comment, please uh, hit star six on your phone and then press one afterward, and it will place you into a caller queue, and uh, we will get to you uh, as soon as possible. And um, we're looking forward, <laughs> looking forward to you to have your questions. So we hope we pray nobody's scared to ask anything on this call tonight concerning this topic because it's definitely it's a topic that needs uh, attention. It needs to be discussed, all right? So, again, thank you, Jermaine. And uh, Mr. Dave Wiseman, I want, I want to bring you up, sir. Uh, I, w- I want to allow you uh, the floor, uh, per se. And I want to throw a question in. I don't know what you have. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Even, but, I, but I do want to throw a question in so you can, um, you know, kind of, you know, Help, help, help some folks out, man. You can help okay, me out, okay. actually, you know. Um, it, it's just simple, Dave. You know, it, it, we live in a society where we see sex everywhere. We see it on the Internet. We see it on television. We see it in commercials. We even see it on, um, you know, what we think, should, you know, you know, cartoons. Exactly. <laughs> you know, they're now making stuff animated. Uh, with with, with uh, sexual connotations in there, and we hearing about all these uh, sex scandals, and you know the TV shows with the show scandal. And now you got you know being Mary Jane that's out there now, you know for uh, one's entertainment. I mean, sex, seeing that we see sex everywhere, and 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 and, and society is painting it a picture of sex just being, um, you know. It's fun. It don't matter who you're involved with. You know, just do what you're doing and just and have fun. You know, right? But Dave, talk to us tonight, and, and you know, like I don't know what you have, but I, w- I want you to deal with this question as well. What I mean, it's really simple. What are the dangers? What 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 are the dangers of having premarital sex? What are the dangers in that? And and what is it that we're not seeing? Society is showing one thing. But what is it that we're not seeing that's behind the scenes or the real, you know, that real damage that's taking place? So if you can touch on that and along with whatever you have, uh, man, uh, I'm sure you're going to bless us even with the best. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother Rodney. And uh, Jermaine, that was a nice piece, brother. Uh, for everybody on the call, thank you for supporting us, the 12 Kings. And for your question that you got right there, uh, Rodney, the dangers of having sex before marriage. Well, what that, you know, there's so many ways that you can attack that, and I'm going to try to attack it to one of the simplest ways mm-hmm. as a man. And the simplest ways, I'm just give like a version, that godly man, I'm going to give that one man who has his foot between first and second base who may be playing Mm-hmm. the role, and a third one, he just don't even care. Okay. The, uh, the man, the, actually the man who is seeking this woman to be in his life, he is going to actually to operate and use his mind before he really thinks about the sex. 
everything is going to be mental because once he spends the, his time in his chambers and he learns mm-hmm. how to get the woman of his dreams, he has to learn mm-hmm. how to entertain her with an affection. He has to be passionate. He has to have a lot of patience. He has to work on himself. So this is his OJT of working on before marriage so he won't step in and put one foot in the water with sex. He has his both feet waiting on first base and being in the waiting of. So he's working on himself to actually strive and have a very, not to say perfect type of a thing, but try to make it perfect as he possibly can, the best way he can without Mm -hmm. indulging into sex. And for that, a man who's doing that type of stuff is, like I said, it's all mental. He has to really open up himself, and then at that time, the woman really gets a chance to understand him. But in this society that we're living in, that's like that perfect world where a man is trying to stand the guard and use his mind and do the things of that nature. You get some men who will stand, but their mental capacity doesn't go too far, so they go back on what they know. And so what they know is all the visualizations that they've been seeing on TV, like stuff that you just got through speaking of earlier, how sex is everywhere, and you mm-hmm. go back to your old boy network. What used to work for me? I'm laying, yeah. I'm just going to be real, I'm just, I'm laying in the bed, it's 8 o'clock in the morning, nobody's here, and nature is here with me, and nobody's mm-hmm. here. So your mind quickly will go into something. So what mm-hmm. you're trying to entertain and waiting for that one you want to, you change it up instead of saying, you know, like the world does when you go get a new car. You want to test drive it. It's time to test the product. I got to know mm-hmm. the product is going to bounce and do the things it need to do so I can say, I got something. This is viable. This works for me. This is what I want. And then you try to go back to first base and, you know, try to do it God's way, but you done already messed up because you done tested the product. You done did what you had to do. <laughs> and so, you, you know, you basically, your hands are not clean. You got one hand dirty with you, but you're trying to clean it off with Ajax and Comic and all that type of stuff, and it ain't working. So at that time, sometimes <laughs> mentally, a man doesn't bring in the thing that he's supposed to bring in to that marriage or that thing because his mental is, like, shattered. He's not already tasted the sex. He doesn't yeah. really bring that 100% man to the table. By him not bringing that 100% man at the table, this woman starts to see something artificial in him and her, and then she starts to see something artificial in himself. Reason by mm-hmm. being is because she'll be thinking, you know, hey, I allowed this thing to happen, and, you know, he took mm-hmm. charge. There's a lesson to be learned in that. It's depending on how you look at that lesson, mm-hmm. but it could be a dangerous lesson also on that woman because, if that happens and he was granting the lady and saying, listen, you know, baby, we're going to work this out. I want you to be my woman, yada, yada, yada. Mm. But, you mm. know, I got this urge and I want to do some things. And, you know, you know, you know how it is, what, what yeah. we used to say, and this and that game don't change. Mm. It's just new yeah, players. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. you say what you say to get into first base, and when you get into first base, you try to go around all the bases, and you want to run around all the bases and score all the runs. While you run around <laughs> all the bases and score the runs, the woman starts to be devalued. She has no more value no more because mm-hmm. the first thing was she was of value. You done been mm-hmm. in it and ran around the bases so many times in there, she is devalued. Now you put her in a scorecard wow. of many other women that you probably ever dealt with in your past. Mm-hmm. Usually a man turns around and do some things like that, the dangerous of if the woman is putting more of herself out there on him she stands to be put in rotation. So she's not the only one. Yeah. And that third man, he just really doesn't care. He might, because we always find, hear the story about a good girl with a bad boy. We hear that all the time. We even hear that so much with, you know, it's a common thing with, you know, the story of preacher's kids. A lot of preachers, you know, with their kids or what have you, they turn mm-hmm. out and get this wrong type of individual and stuff because, they're real worldly. They've been under this doctrine for so long, so they want to taste another atmosphere outside and see what the taste is all about. And mm-hmm. sometimes that man, you know, he'll carry a sexually transmitted disease. It's something that will maybe stop her from having children. Mm-hmm. You know, give her something that's going to pretty much kind of like take her out based on 
his lyrics that he is speaking and saying, baby, I'm all right, this and this and that. She's looking at this person. She's looking at the shell, and the shell may look real handsome to her. But in, in essence, you know, it's filled with filth because the mind is filled and mm-hmm. the body is filled. So he's just passing off not only disease, but he's passing off all that spiritual condemnation that he's done dealt with so many other folks because that spirit mm-hmm. realm is real real. Yeah. So it's actually messing that person up. You know, she might be sitting down, and, you know, they, they did it in dozen and sex. She's probably dealing with 300 spirits. Who's to say? Well, it's like that out there. Yeah. And then that's why we always hear women and men say this thing. Don't you ever really trip how men and women say this, and they really don't really analyze when they say this? Men say it and women say it so much. They say, you know what? Oh, she crazy. Oh, he crazy. <laughs> Both of y'all crazy because y'all dealt with so many crazy spirits. So the spirit that is housed in your temple, and you got 300 and some spirits running up off into you, of course you're going to be crazy because everybody got a personality. You know what I mean? And same with the man. The man sitting around, same. he's wondering why, you know, she crazy. Man, you know the way she looked at me and this and that? Of course. The spirit real is real. you dealing with this type of stuff. Mm-hmm. And then that type of thing right there, it goes on and on and on and on and on. And for mm-hmm. the man who's actually out there trying to do it the right way, be honest with you, if you ain't got your mental down packed and you have not cleansed yourself for getting into this point where you said, I'm going to wait and this person is going to be my bride and I'm putting all my energy into this, to be honest with you, and if you ain't carrying God with you, mm-hmm. I got to be real with you. It ain't going to work. It ain't going to work because your attention span is so much that's out there. Mm-hmm. Either one, All the callers on the phone, everybody that's up on Facebook and whatever it may be, you can step outside your house and drive a mile away from your house. I guarantee you, you'll see over two or 300 different types of things that's kind of like sexually perverted. You're passing things. You're actually passing houses where somebody did something sexually perverted. You don't even know that neighbor, but they've done something. You, you're around all this stuff. Mm-hmm. You're around a whole bunch of craziness and a whole bunch of foolishness. And so for that man to be that way, like the first man that I kind of explained before, that righteous man is doing and they want to do the thing right, he really has to take care of his mental. And his mental has to be charged, and he has to show the capacity to his woman that I am the man, I can do this, I can handle this, I can go ahead on and be the leader. And he can put it upon himself because he gives himself a test to say, you know what, I did this. Now, if I'm faithful to God on this area of waiting, where are the rewards that he has stepped for me? Where are their place? Now everything becomes a treasure chest now. You're in the treasure chest of the kingdom and the paradise now. You and your wife and stuff, God has everything out there in store for you because you yeah. waited and did it his way. Doing it the other way, it sounds good, but, you know, even the Bible says, you know, sin is good for a season, and once that season is over with and stuff, you got to get back to work. Yeah. you got to do what you got to do. But the bad part is dealing with somebody like that, you end up catching something that you don't even want to deal with, it'll mess with you emotionally. You're going through physical abuse, mental abuse, verbal abuse. You're dealing with somebody who's always harassing you because they feel that they own you. And the man who is actually sitting there and waiting to do what he needs to do and do it God's way, his job is going to be a whole lot tougher because the devil has a way of throwing stuff up in your past to trigger your emotions and say, you know what, boy, you ready to jump on this party right here. If Sonya's mm-hmm. not ready to go do it, you got Teresa right over here. You know, Teresa just calls you because the devil got a way of bringing people up in our <laughs> yeah. past. And it's like, you know, when we entertain someone, he'll throw mm-hmm. somebody in our past real quick mm-hmm. and distort the picture. And you really have to be like those horses had those things on their eyes. You got to be focused on your prize and you got to go with it. I'm done, man. That's it. Man, <laughs> good stuff, Dave. Good stuff, man. Actually, you can go another 30 minutes if you want to. Nah. Uh, no, man. <laughs> that, that, was, that was some good stuff, man. And I, I, I thank you for just being real uh, about it, you know, because what you were saying, 
uh, what I got out of it is just the how sex happens before marriage. We, a, a foundation is destroyed. It's not. It's not set on the right foundation. That's right. When it's not set on the right foundation, then if it's a weak foundation, because like I say, sex is really a weak foundation. And just to add on that, I'll say this last piece. Yeah. Uh, uh-huh. We're pretty much in this thing where, remember we heard the 80-20 rule? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now we're dealing with so much that's going on. A lot of women, when they're sitting here, they say, hey, you know, I'm waiting for my man of God. I'm waiting such and such. To be honest with you, to be point blank honest, the numbers are not like that anymore. The numbers are something like a 95-5 because there are because we're living in some wicked times, and the yeah. good brothers and stuff that were standing by trying to do what they're trying to do, or the reformed brothers trying to get it right, right, they're pushed by so much to come the other way based on all this stuff that we got out here. It is very hard because a lot of them are pushing towards that thing. And then, you know, pretty much 90% of them brothers, when they look at women, you know, the sex had already started when we looked. Go ahead, Before man. we even say hello. Mm-hmm. Because there's so much of that perversion that kicks it that way. Now, the good brothers, the ones that's in training, they want to know about the personality. How can we cultivate this? How we can bring something together as a unit, but you got to look at it. I can tell you, you can turn on the TV right now, I guarantee you, I've, I've put anything down by everybody on the phone, steak sandwiches, but I guarantee you, <laughs> you will see 5 to 10 or 15 perversions of sex. You flip through the channel, even when you're doing a home shopping network, look how they do the blouses and things. Everything is geared for the man to fall off his throne the way God has that man set in place. You got to cut out all that stuff and just focus because a lot of us are losing this battle and we don't have enough of people to reach the extended hand to say, Hey, I got you. Mm-hmm. Hey, I got you. Our world is, is changing right before us and a lot of us wanna sit and look at it and say, Hey, you know, you know, we're gonna pray about it, we're gonna do something you know, enough of that. You pray yeah. But God mm-hmm. calls you out to be men of action. You got to get out there and you got to make some things happen to change the yeah. perverse world that we're in. Exactly. And you know, exactly. that's the way it is. That's the way I see it. Mhm. Yeah. And Dave, you're right, man. You're right. We have to do something. And like I said, it's in it. That's the basis of what this call is tonight. We, we want to do something about the foolishness that's taking place, the damaged relationships that are happening. You know, marriages that are messed up. You know, there's marriages out there that, that unfortunately, the foundation is just sex. Marriages. Nothing else going on but that. That's the only thing they can look forward to. What kind of relationship is that? So thank you, Dave. Thank you for bringing that, because you brought out some, some, some serious issues in your, in your talk and, and and uh, we want to get back to some things that uh, you brought out. But before before we before we get to Keith Murphy, we have a caller uh, that's in queue, and uh, we want to allow uh, this individual to uh, speak and, and give their comments or their questions. And uh, caller, you are on the line. If you can just state your name and uh, where you're from, and just give us your comments or your questions. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. This is JoJo, and uh, first of all, I agree with uh, what everyone has said prior to. Um, I think I have a, a com- uh, several comments more so than questions. Uh, mm-hmm. Primarily, I think uh, one of the main reasons that we've gone astray is that there's a disconnect, because remember when Adam was walking in the cool of garden, of the garden with God, there was intimacy, mm-hmm. and sin uh, separated that that intimacy. So the enemy has come in and perverted um, the sense of what God initially ordained. And also, you know, I'm glad that you guys are bringing this up because sex is a topic that the church likes to avoid. They just simply say, keep your legs closed, pants zip, but, you know, still there's <laughs> STDs and affairs mm-hmm. and all other things that is not happening by osmosis. So I think we need to address things 
more uh, from a physiological standpoint and understand how the brain works. Um, there are several uh, hormones that are released Hello? during that, that, that time of intimacy. There's oxytocin, adrenaline, dopamine, and serotonin, and each one of them uh, stimulates the neurotransmitters in our brain, and it causes us to feel that feeling that we get when we, when we uh, engage in sexual activity, whether it's with your, our husband and wife or whether it's it, with fornication. So we have to understand that man is a trichotomy, and instead of just addressing the the spiritual aspect of this thing, we have to deal with the mind and the mind and the body as well, and understand how all three of them are interconnected. And I think that when we do that, we'll have a greater grasp, and we can we can tackle this problem because there is a a difference between most people when they have sex, they're looking for love, and mm-hmm. and they're mis misconstruing love with lust and infatuation and attraction and affirmation. Mm-hmm. So all these terms are being interchanged with love. So that's how the enemy gets us so caught up in the in the act of sex. It's like seeking that first how you never. Uh, you never get it once you once you've obtained it. So I, I, I just I just feel that we need to to uh, aggressively and assertively tackle the issues that we have at hand. And 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 as speaking from the point of a woman, I, I think that we need to unlearn a lot of things that we've been taught about sex. Sure, it's for procreation and it's also for uh, enjoyment. But we we just need to be real and come to ourselves. And as sisters, we need to to come together and help each other heal. Because mm-hmm. as the the, the 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 process of sex, the the act itself, uh, we are carriers of the seed. So it, it's it's a whole big old story of how the enemy has perverted this thing in order to attack the two two of the main pillars of society, which is marriage and family. If we, he can get those off, you know that society is gone to the to the hills. And as the brother said, sex sells everything from cornflakes, you name it. You know, it, it it entices that part of our brain to release those chemicals, and we therefore act on it. So that's my mm-hmm. comment. Okay. Thank, hey, thanks, JoJo, because you, you brought up some uh, uh, aspect that I think people uh, don't know too much about, and that is that scientific area of uh, what actually goes on, you know, that takes place in the brain. So, um, you know, along with knowledge, along with, Knowing what thus said the Lord, it's all you right. It's good to know how uh, certain things operate, and uh, you know, sort from a uh, physiological standpoint, as you stated earlier. So, again, thanks, thanks for your, thanks for that, thanks for your comments on that area, and we appreciate you uh, coming on and, and giving us that. Um, and Dave, let, let, let me let me bring you back for a second. Um, what 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 do you do you have any comments in that particular area of of how um you know let me let me let me say it like this it's especially when it comes to the area of being you know unlearning things uh-huh. you know because a lot a lot a lot of us has been um you know taught we've seen it at a young age so you know right. it, it starts young. And when it starts young, you know, all you do is just pretty much imitate what you, what you, what you see. So, can you touch on that just for, just for a minute? And then after that, we're going to go to uh, Keith Murphy. But just that area of of, of unlearning, you know, what we what we know. And, and, you, and you know, that is a that is that part of unlearning. I mean, you really have to go in and really. Put your mind focus on a very spiritual base. Get it very concrete to attack what the enemy has placed in your mind and misplace it and get rid of it and focus on the way that you're supposed to focus. But you have to 
be around godly brothers and godly sisters who actually mm-hmm. are going through this. Because in actuality, we're all going through something. Everybody yeah, got yeah. something. Right. And we have to get together and come together as brothers and sisters, pray, work on our stuff. Just the stuff, not work and have little googly eyes towards each other, but work on our stuff so we can get away from this type of, of thinking that surround us because in an hour, because we're really fighting something that is so to the point where we're not doing we're not moving in a, with so much action until the bad action is moving on goodwill. So we have goodwill, but the bad action is moving on us. And the reason why I say that, I share this to you real quick, and I'm gonna let Keith say what he need to say. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm working with children in the inner city of here in Atlanta. These kids come up to me and these parents about the iPhones and things of this nature. I mean, they got, and I, I just got the regular phone. I don't have that iPhone and all that other type of stuff. But anyway, these kids will come up to me, and they'll show me these different apps that they got. They got all these sexual perversion acts to show how many positions to do it this way and this way. And I'm like, what, where will you get this from? And you're dealing yeah. with this type of stuff, and then when, when you, you sit and talk to the parents and stuff, and you – and I'm like, hey, you know, we need to work on this because we don't want to lose your son to this because, you know, they with the pants down now and they're doing certain other different types of things, who knows, but we need to work together. Sometimes in this work with the conditions, sometimes you're actually going up against, you're actually going up against one of Satan's uh, agents because sometimes the brook from where they came from is so contaminated it's mm-hmm. like all the things that you're doing is almost in vain. You just mm-hmm. got to keep on praying and praying. But it's actually a hard thing because the reason why it's so hard, if we get together and work together as a unit, here comes the thing that's going to disrupt everything, egos. Because mm. we have dropped the baton on too many things in life, and we have not went back and picked up the baton. It's almost like the domino effect. What you say or what you do or don't do is going to have a domino effect in the future. So if we didn't say anything to the structure of our kids and if nothing was said to us and we don't pass it on, then it's going to be a domino effect into the future and that what's going to be in the future is going to hurt us. Because, mm-hmm. you know, when you really look at the end of the day, God's accountability is totally different for what man thinks. Man is setting accountability here on earth, and he's really not pressing man to do too much of nothing. But God is pressing you to do big change. And really we're not seeing big change. We're seeing social gatherings, and we're seeing we're praying mm-hmm. that thing, but we're not putting the action for that thing to happen. So that's a real touchy thing for me right there because – Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I see a lot of people say, let's do this, and when it's time to go in the trenches, and I'm that type of person, let's go. But every time I do that, my brother, when I say mm-hmm. let's go, and if it's a wall of 50 of us, there's only four that will step forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a very yeah. touchy thing for me because I just see a lot of non-action, and sometimes mm-hmm. you just got to grab the beast and just choke the beast by his throat and tame the beast because you have that authority. But I just don't yeah. see the, I see women doing that because women can get together and do such and such. Men, it's a blessing that us 12 kings is together and how we were put together. But yeah. 12 kings, we, we, we need more than just us to go fight this beast. Because exactly. This thing is crazy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. There's unity. I mean, you know, in unity, there's power. Oh, yeah. There's power, man. So you, you you are exactly right. Thank you, Dave, for okay, no uh, touching on that because uh, you know we we there's so many things we got to unlearn, and the only way we can do it is come together in the name of the Lord and go by what He has already prescribed in the beginning. A lot of us just got to return back <laughs> to what the Word of God is telling us. And so uh, again, thank you again, brother, uh, Mr. Murphy. Uh, yes, we sir. want to bring you on. We want to bring you on, man. And and I, I want to I want to I want you to touch on, you know, wh- whatever you have uh, to present to us tonight concerning um, uh, sex. I, I want you to let, let's 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 spin off of, of of Dave and and part of JoJo's comment about um, you know responsibility. You know. Touch on touch on the area of responsibility of of 
of the parents, of the adults, uh, when it comes to sex just being out of control. And then, you know, throw that in with, uh, you know, whatever you uh, have to give us. Well, in that area, I think that the parents and the parenting skills have been diluted so much over the past two uh, generations that the priorities that and I was taught, and probably you as well, barely even exist anymore. We didn't teach. Mm -hmm. We we were taught, you know, keep your hands to yourself. Mm -hmm. You were taught that in kindergarten. And that didn't, didn't just mean no fighting or no hitting. It also meant just keep your hands to yourself. Yeah. And then people just, just no longer uh, upheld that and it wasn't policed or enforced. And uh, people just lost interest, I guess. I don't know. But the priorities that were around when I was coming up just barely exist nowadays. And uh, it's, it's getting swallowed up with all of this uh, media and uh, the lack of, of, of a self-pride and dignity. Mm -hmm. And yeah. folks just it gotten to the point right now where they just don't really care because everybody's doing it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that that is one of the stupidest reasons to do anything, and I mean that word stupid. I rarely use that word. But that's one of the stupidest reasons to do or not do anything because everybody yeah. else is. You know, everybody else can be going to hell, but I, I got uh, reservations with a ninety-five thousand room mansion up there because I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. At least I think I am, and I try real hard. Mm -hmm. And I was never a that much of a follower. So not that everyone, you know, is a leader or can't be a leader, but you don't have to be a follower if you're not. And if mm -hmm. you're seeing all your peers and, and, and subjecting yourself to that peer pressure, you don't like the things going on, change your environment. Change the people you're mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Most people are not comfortable with doing anything that they know is wrong. And then those that have questions, I say to them, if you have to question it, it's probably wrong. Hmm. It's pretty simple to me. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and that learning and unlearning, what uh, Dave stressed, I teach golf. And uh, a lot of my students are already golfers. Then they come to me and tell me, you know, they want to learn how to play better. And I tell them right away before I even take their money. First thing you got to do is unlearn and relearn. Mm -hmm. You got to unlearn and relearn. You got whatever it is that you had in mind before you write this check, I don't even mm -hmm. want to hear it. So that mm -hmm. means you can't even think it. And I have stopped a lesson because one of my students, a male kept telling me, well, I had so and so and so and so and I thought this. I said, okay, let me go. And I ended, ended, ended the session. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to relearn, that means you're going to be stuck right where you, where you were when you came to me. Yeah, there you go. It's the same thing with, with godly principles. You go to God and you bring that, those tacky principles you had once you get to him, you got to leave those other ones somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Because God don't want to hear that. Well, this is the way I used to do it. Oh, well, then what do you need me for? I mean, God ain't going to say that, but you understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got you. Anyway, uh, as far as this uh, premarital sex thing or sex period, mm -hmm. uh, I have many, many views on it, wrote a lot of stuff about it, uh, <clears throat> some published, some not yet published. But when we started talking about this, one of the things that came to my mind was one of the posts that I made on Facebook a few hours ago. And so I pulled it up while I was listening to a uh, day. And it goes like this. When you meet someone that is precious to you and you want it to work, Maybe you should start it off 
different than you used to or usually do. That way mm. you won't mess it up. <laughs> With that last part, that way you mm-hmm. won't mess it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm gonna leave it there because you know I don't. I'm not good at the preaching thing, but <laughs> I'm gonna leave that right there. But that one. Okay. One of the things that I want to say to to the women, to the ladies, and to the women of God and females. First thing I want you to stop doing using the term dating. People relate that term dating with mating. They even rhyme. It's not that you intend that you're implying a mating situation, but it's the mindset of the people who are listening or hearing. So change that term from dating to outing, because all you're doing is going out. And I think it was Jermaine that said you're learning each other, you're teaching each other. And if that indeed is the case, you don't want anybody thinking about sex outside of, of the outing that you're on. And you don't want the person that you're out with thinking about sex. So you are just going out. You're not having a date. The date is just the day that you have this event. (laughs) All right. It's a mindset. I'm telling you, all of this stuff that we worry about, premarital sex, et cetera, it's all in the mindset. It's it's it's, uh, consistent with what everybody else is doing. If you want to be a leader, you need to lead yourself away from that particular mindset. Mm-hmm. All right? Mm-hmm. Now, now, one other thing, well, I got a million of them, you know that, Rodney, but we don't have all night. Mm-hmm. One, of the, <laughs> one other thing that I want to uh, put, in, put out there is that Premarital sex or sex period can be confusing. Premarital sex causes confusion. And we all know who the author of confusion is. Yeah. So we stay away from anything that could, quote, unquote, be confusing. And where our minds are clear to make better selections, choices, decisions, et cetera. Because if all you're thinking about after you, quote, unquote, dated this person for the last 30 days or two months, and now all of a sudden you are having sex. Now when you think about this person, all you're thinking about is how good they, he or she made you feel. And you're basing future decisions and choices on that particular uh, aspect of your relationship. So my question is, how and why would you make choices and decisions based on two or three minutes of pleasure? <laughs> <laughs> you got 23 point, what, 56 hours left in the day and on three minutes, who <laughs> are living so much. <laughs> I mean, come on, give me a break with that. You know, it just doesn't add up, even if you take God out of it. And I'll never do that. Just use your own common sense. Could put God back in it and use your discernment. You take a three minutes out of a 24-hour day to tell this man or this woman, ooh, I love you so much, let's get married. <laughs> All right, I'm going to leave that where it is right now because, you know, I get passionate. Okay. Stuff. But anyway. <laughs> um, it's, it's, let, let me look at, I have to share my own personal experiences. Okay. Before I married, got married or was blessed to be married to Miss Rosetta, I had abstained from sexual activity for over 20 years. Wow. Over 20 years. Mm-hmm. The reason I did that is because I began to practice some introspection, that's self-inspection, to try to determine why did all my past relationships and two marriages fail. 
Mm-hmm. What happened that they, they went bad? I loved them or I thought I did. They loved me or I thought they did. And the one common thing in every one of those failed relationships was we had premarital sex. Mm. So when I realized that, Rodney, mm-hmm. I said to myself, self, the next time you get involved with a woman, no sex. Mm-hmm. No sex. You can go out and spend two hundred dollars on dinner, take her butt home, and you take your little nail butt home. <laughs> <laughs> simple, simple as that. Now mm-hmm. the short, short, short version of that is, I, I, I never had trouble or problem meeting or connecting with a female or a woman. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> These, several of these women that I met during this span dumped me because mm. they couldn't figure out why I didn't want to have sex. Okay, wow. You know, and Interesting. Those, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, I thought it was odd too, but I let it go because I had made a commitment to myself yeah. and I'm believing the Holy Spirit at the time because. I really wasn't in the word then. That no matter what, I was not going to bed with any of these women mm-hmm. at this t- at this stage of the game. Uh, it worked out well because a few years later, some of those same women that dumped me called me, Keith, how you doing? Are you married yet? <laughs> 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 so I think that to me. They knew they had something good, and they blew it. Mm-hmm. Now they want to try it again. But now it's too late. Mm-hmm. You kind of showed me, you showed me where it was at. You were more with uh, external than internal. Mm-hmm. And even then, like I said, I may not have been in the words during all of that period because I've only been in it for about 20-something years. But uh, it still let me know how shallow they were. Yeah. At any rate, That kind of ties in with, with what I said about the three minutes worth of pleasure of a 24-hour period. And I could have made love with those women, but they could have made love with me. And it would have jacked up the whole thing. Then I would have had more women that uh, I've been married to, and it didn't work. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I'm grateful for that. Mm-hmm. And the, uh, another thing I want to say is that uh, commitment rarely comes after sex. Okay. Commitment rarely wow. comes that okay. or intimacy. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, Dave kind of touched on that with the mental thing when he said to go at the mind. He uses his mind to go to her mind. Mm-hmm. And they connect on a certain level, that's great, but if all of a sudden your mind goes back to yesteryear or yesterday, now you're back to the sex thing again. Mm-hmm. And instead of going, instead of seeking the commitment, you're seeking the uh, cookies, as somebody said. Where anyway, man. now I'm thinking <laughs> at the end of the day, these cookies ain't gonna do me no good. I can't talk to them. They might make me talk, but I can't talk to them. <laughs> they, yeah. I'm just saying, you know it. Everything in a relationship, including marriage, has a place. Mm -hmm. Sex is an enhancement for marriage, at least in my age. But let me back up a little bit to touch on what Jermaine said. For for creating and procreating, when you're young, in your 20s, 30s, 40s, even, sex primarily is to multiply. But when you get my age, I ain't having no more babies. So sex to me is an opportunity for me to show how much I love my wife, my mate, my spouse. Yeah. Because I don't use sex as a personal satisfaction, personal instant gratification. I get more satisfaction out of satisfying my wife than I do myself. Mm-hmm. Period. So mm-hmm. the pleasure thing I get 
when I'm satisfying my spouse, the love of my life. Mm -hmm. Pretty simple. Once again, you know, I'm not going to dwell on this stuff too long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm the kind of person that I provoke thought to make you think about this stuff. I'm not going to shove it down your throat. You can just disregard it altogether if you want to. But then tomorrow, when you're doing the same thing and the same thing happens, call the 12 teams. We'll help you out. <laughs> Amen. So, am I done? Is my time up or what? Yeah, I got one. I, got one. I want to get to yeah. We want to get to one of these uh, causes, but I want to say this though. You, you brought up. Um, I mean, wow. You know, <laughs> 20, 20, 20 years of of abstinence. That's because right. you because you realize that the key component in every failed relationship before you making that promise to yourself was sex was involved. Correct. Hmm. Man. I hope somebody heard that tonight. You know. That's that that's that's powerful. It, you you well, the thing right, that's 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 go, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, you go ahead, man. No, I'm just gonna, you know, I mean, that's, that's, that's a powerful testimony, man. That's powerful. That's powerful. And, um, you know, it takes very, you right, it takes introspection to, to sit up there and say that, hey, I, I got to look at this thing and see what's really going on. And, and I think what you saw as well is that this must be something true in God's word concerning, you know, sex being for that man and that woman who's there. Right. We want to go to a caller. Let's 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 get let's get our caller in and I want um hold on one second here. Hey Rod? Yes. It's Philanda. I'm, I, What's up, lady? How y'all doing? Hey, hey Philanda. Man, I am truly being blessed uh, by this call. We talked about uh, sex on the wire. We're waiting call today as well. And I just wanted to briefly kind of speak from a woman's perspective. Um, Keith, I'm blessed every time you share the amount of time that you have, uh, you abstain from sex when, you know, before getting married. I'm actually going into my fifth year, and we have a movement that we're calling Team Purity. That it's, just, it's a group of us. Uh, actually, some men are involved as well, but we had to really just attack some things. I think I think it was JoJo, you said her name was, that, that said that people don't want to talk about sex. The church don't want to talk about sex, but we have to. And, and personally, from a, from a female perspective, I had to abandon everything that I knew. I had to abandon everything I knew. I had to take some extreme measures. You know, sometimes people think it's, it's, it's kind of funny that I don't watch TV and I, I don't listen to um, anything but gospel music. And I had to go into that extreme mode, that beast mode like that for God, because I wanted to be, I wanted to be pure in his eyes. So when I'm right. found by my husband, I'll be right. pure with him. I mean, I'm looking forward Absolutely. to that, but I had to, I had to abandon everything that I knew, and I had to realize, like Romans 12, too, that I could not conform anymore to the patterns of the world. I had to be transformed. In order to be transformed, I had to unlearn some things, and we got to stop being we got to stop being ashamed to talk about the fact that no, I'm not having sex, and I'm not going to have sex until I'm married, and I'm going to talk about that to to 18 year old young girls. I'm going to talk about that to to 40 year old women. I'm going to talk about that. I'm not mm -hmm. not going to talk about that because we have to talk about our bodies are temples. Our bodies are temples, and as women, we need to be empowered. And I love when you guys say that the women have the power because that is so true. That is so true, and we need to start operating in that power, understanding that we have the right to say no. And that man has to make that commitment to God before he can make that commitment to me. I need him to have already have made that commitment to God and, and not me because, it, I mean, it, it's going to be – 
it's going to be a, a challenge. I mean, we have to keep it real. It's going to be a challenge. But I know that with God, everything is possible. And that's why I'm so excited about what you guys are doing uh, and, and what you guys, what we all get a chance to do together and how we just encourage each other. But the team, the team purity movement is something that has to happen. We got to stop mm-hmm. tiptoeing around sex. We have to stop tiptoeing around it. And Keith, I just love when you say outing and that coffee and conversation. We just got to start right. doing things differently. You know, I, I used to didn't even drink coffee, Keith, until I, I, I started talking to you and I drink coffee. And these are my at least once a week, I've got to have some coffee because I'm preparing myself wow. for coffee and conversation. I had coffee this morning. I don't drink coffee until I got tangled up with the sweat of kings. Now I drink coffee because I'm looking forward. You know, I'm looking forward to that, to, to that outing, that outing of coffee and conversation because how can I get to know him? How can he get to know me if we're sitting in a dark movie? Now we're gonna be sitting at Starbucks right. on the patio, coffee and conversation. <laughs> That's what we're gonna be like doing. Sounds like you read from that book. Sounds uh, to me like you read a book. <laughs> you know what? And I am enjoying it. I am enjoying it. Oh, I am enjoying it. I am. I'm gonna uh, start strongly encouraging people to 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 reach out to you about. It. I, I really am enjoying it. I've truly been blessed by you know just a divine connection that myself and Shamika and Jamila have have gotten with you guys. Y'all have just really been a tremendous blessing to us, and we appreciate you guys. Listen, listen, right. let me let me let me expound on what you said about the women having power and tying it into sex. I mean, I believe women have power. Period, as far as relationship development, the elevation of it, the state to where it goes, the direction it goes, the height, to whatever. I think women have all the power. Now, when it comes to having sex. They still have power as long as they say no. You have the power to say no. And it's, it, it, that, that two-letter word gives you more power than that three-letter mm-hmm. word. You got mm-hmm. more letters and less power. So mm-hmm. until you say yes, there can be no sex unless there's some, mm-hmm. some serious circumstances where they're going to rape you or something. I hate to even say that word. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But think about it. Think about it. There is no sex until you say yes. Mm-hmm. Like like they said in the OJ trial, if it does not fit, you must have quit. Oh <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm done. Keith, 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 don't care. Keith, don't get her started on this call, okay? <laughs> you already know. Please, man. She, she, you know what? I, I feel it brewing already. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Thank you. Hey. I'm rocking, Rodney. I am rocking. I'm rocking. Right. I'm rocking. Oh, oh, Lord. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> hey, I got Glad something to got something to drop in. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Jermaine. Um, I really kind of sense this real strong. You know, this this has been a great uh, night as far as talking on this topic. I'm so glad that we were able to be open and candid about it. But for the person out there who, and I, I really feel you on the call, who has tears in their eyes right now and they say, you know what, I really feel everything that's been said and I really want to do this. But there's just something in me that just drives me towards making this decision that I really don't want to make. There, There is a hope for you. All has not been lost. You know, I really feel like this topic in particular is an area that is um, a little area within the body as a whole. It's an area where the body of Christ has taken a great deal of damage because um, our brothers and sisters just within the body as well as our leadership and we see it with the scandals and things that come up and um, when we see the scandal come on TV and whatnot a lot of people look back and say you know oh, well, I thought they were you know a man of God I thought they were a woman of God and this and that and whatnot so we see that this is the area in the forefront where the enemy really tries to break down the witness of the Lord Jesus and really break us down as a body, because of what's already been said tonight, the power of the unity. 
Scripture says, uh, I think it's in Psalm 133, how God commands a blessing mm-hmm. in the place where there's unity. Yeah, and when right. we have that place of unity ex- exposing what's going on with us. Yeah. We, uh, we as individuals have to get yeah. what's called emotional intelligence. Emotional yeah, intelligence about myself to be able to really talk about and articulate what's going on in me in certain situations. But if I never practice at that, if I never practice at bringing myself out of isolation, never practice at getting myself around people who are headed in that same direction, then my chances are real slim at uh, really experiencing the true healing that is supposed to come from the unity of the body. Scripture talks about how we, when we confess our sins, we do that not just for the sake of doing it, but there's healing attached to it. Yeah. Yeah. James said, go. confess your sins one to another so <laughs> that the healing process can really begin. And mm-hmm. that healing process uh, becomes the responsibility of us as the body. It mm-hmm. is my duty to provide a safe place for my brothers and sisters. Yeah, yeah. When they come to me and they expose something mm-hmm. as, as private and as intimate as yeah. a sexual issue, it is my yeah. responsibility as a member of the kingdom mm-hmm. to, number one, they're not judged. Because, number one, yeah. I don't have to, for God to be judging me in that way. You know? Mm-hmm. Judge not let yeah. you be judged. Okay, I don't, I'm the one who created all things and know what I think for I think it. I really don't want him on me like that. So yeah. far be it from me to pass judgment in that way. But to provide that safe place to undergird and to build up and to still see the God in somebody. Mm-hmm. Talking to this person in particular, we still see the God in you. God still sees the God in you. Yeah. You are no right. more or less created in the image than you were before the act because of the fact that while we were yet in our sin, the penalty was paid for us. Mm-hmm. While all the stuff that we would ever do was in the future, the penalty was paid for us. Mm-hmm. So I feel that when we, when we recognize and gain trust in the body, because all relationships move at the speed of trust, husband and wife, mm-hmm. Of your your relationships with family and your relationships within fellow brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, all relationships move at the speed of trust. And when we really begin to develop a trust with each other to say, you know what, if if what you say be true, and if you are who you say you are, mm-hmm. I'm gonna step out and I'm gonna come with this because I really want to live an authentic lifestyle for God. Well, I don't have to hide. I don't have to try and cover my tracks. I don't have to put up this front that I'm, you know, not to say that we don't need to call ourselves blessed and highly favored of the Lord and this and that because we are, and we need to speak those things that are not as though they were. But we need to have a moment where we can be honest, too. Mm -hmm. You know what? They're feeling that Mm -hmm. because of what what it is that I have been doing, this, this heartfelt, just hurt that I've been carrying. Mm-hmm. So just wanted to drop Amen. whoever that whoever that was. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jermaine, for allowing uh, the Holy Spirit to use you in that way, man. Because um, you know, with there 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 are people that are hurting. There are people that are covering up their issues and their problems with sex. Sex has has become a form of drug, a mm-hmm. form of medication. And we know those things are nothing but temporary. And what we think that we're healing something, we're actually doing more damage. Now we're creating a problem on top of a problem. And we know drugs. Drugs, it means nothing no different. Drugs is only used to cover up something, to take away the pain, to, to try to eradicate whatever the issue is that's going on eternally. And sex is one of the most commonly used drugs out there. Mm-hmm. 
We don't talk about that. See, that, that, that drug is, is, is it's not illegal in society. Mm. But at the same time, but we know it's against God's will. And that is not society. <laughs> yeah. Hey, there you go. We got another caller. Um, I believe I believe it's Miss D. I believe I believe, I believe that's I believe that's her name. I, I've, I've seen her enough now. So, what's going on, D? Hi, I'm D from Florida, and I concur with everything that I've heard tonight. I just want to speak from a latest point of view. Also, mm-hmm. you know, okay. I think that. As toddlers, we should be teaching our children, don't let anyone touch you here. Don't let them touch you there. If they mm-hmm. do, you come tell me. You know, this thing, this teaching needs to start at an early age. And then yeah. as they grow older and grow up, they got some kind of guideline. They, they got, you know, something they can fall back on. And then it should be followed up. You don't get through learning. It should be followed up in elementary, high school, you know, through your adult life. You never mm-hmm. get too old to learn. You can all, yeah. or bring something back to your remembrance. And so mm-hmm. it's so important. And I know that I think people, you know, they say, well, I've been abstaining for five, six years. I'm just going to go on and get me some and just repent later. No, you playing <laughs> Russian roulette. Because I I think, well, how do you know if you're not going to die in the act? You know, I mean, you know, you're just playing Mm -hmm. Russian roulette with your very own soul. And so that's so important not to be of that frame of mind. And, um, you know, just follow God's word, you know, because he tells us, you know, I I say, you know, people don't, we don't realize Evidently that God's word is true. When he says, you know, to abstain, you know, from this fornication or whatever, and and the marriage bed, he says, undefiled. So we we have to wait till after marriage and everything. And just think, if we waited till after marriage and we consummate the marriage, uh, and if you do it beforehand, all you're going to do on your wedding night is like, Business as usual, you know, and so mm-hmm. um, it's so important to do it God's way, to have yeah. that man. Can you imagine what it would be like to be marrying a virgin? Men like marrying virgins, but women like marrying a virgin too, you know. <laughs> oh, no. I don't marry too much, but I want a virgin too, you know. <laughs> and so um, it's just so mm-hmm. important to do it God's way. Because, look, yeah. here, you don't have to worry about no baby daddy, no baby mama, because it's just you and him. You don't, you know, mm-hmm. it's a lot of things that wouldn't even be coming up in the relationship if we did it God's way. And I know yeah. a lot of us have messed it up, you know, but, but there's hope, you know. Yeah. When you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, Oh, you ain't mm-hmm. gonna have to have much cueing because you're gonna say, Lord, I am tired of this. I'm mm-hmm. tired of giving myself away. I'm tired of feeling, you know, abused here. I am just tired. God, I need you. I need mm-hmm. to do this thing right. I need to get this thing right. Lord, have mercy on me. I need to be delivered. And honey, mm-hmm. God will do it. <laughs> Yeah. I can tell oh, you, no. I will do. He and, and I was thinking about Jacob. You know, Jacob got himself in a mess. You know, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, marrying them two, two women, two, you know, two sisters, and then going having babies with their nannies or whatever, you know, whoever they was with. That it just gets into a mess because you have a man and a woman. Say you got a married couple now. And this woman or this man know this when I've been with all of these other people. It's going to always be a thought. Hopefully not always. But you're going to probably think, mm, he was with so-and-so. He went with this one. I heard he went with that one. I heard she was with this. You know, it just it just puts too much stress on a relationship. Mm-hmm. Uh, wouldn't it be nice if you, just, if you married a man that was a... Uh, 
virgin and he married a woman that was a virgin. We don't hear a whole lot about men being virgins, but God wants the men to be virgins also, not hey, just the women. Real. That's pretty well all I wanted to say, but I've enjoyed the topic because it's very needed, you know, and it's brought a lot of insight, and I thank God for that. Thank you, Dee. Thank you, Dee, for your call, and thank you for your insight that you've given us. And you're right, you know, hey, God, you know, we we, sometimes we we look at virgin and we think more of the female than we think on the man. And, uh, you know, God is looking for a man who are pure as well. And even if you messed up, the beauty of it is you can start over again. You can't change, you know, your your you being one hundred percent pure. You can't change that. However, you can start the purity process once you commit get over to God and say that, hey, I want to do this thing right. Amen. I've seen too much trauma, I've seen too much damage, I've seen too much uh mess uh a mess in relationships. That derive that derive around sex happening before marriage. You know, when you see where the foundation is only sex. When you when you get sick of that, and and if you are partake of it, you get sick of it yourself. Then you know, change can take place. Change definitely can take place. So again, Dee, thank you for that call. We got another caller uh, that we want to get to. Um, caller. Uh, just let us know um, your name and and um, where you're calling from, and just hey, just give you a comment or your question. Hi, I'm Twelve King. This is Jamila from Team Positive. How are you guys doing tonight? Oh, what's up? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Not so much. I just wanted to briefly uh, comment. To, hey, to Jamila, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? <laughs> I just wanted to let you guys know how pleased I am with this conversation on tonight. And Mm -hmm. I am just so grateful to God that he places in your heart to really cover this. I really don't understand why through the years uh, the topic of sex has been hidden uh, from us, from the church, and as a, a young girl growing up, also from my mother. So it was so many things that I had to find out on my own because what I got from my mom was sex is bad, you know, just don't do it. And from the church, they never wanted to discuss it. And I I think that if they had discussed it more when I was younger, there were some mistakes that I probably would have avoided. So just like the previous caller said, we need to start this from early childhood. We need to instill in our daughters how valuable they are and what they mean to God, as well as our boys, to let them know Mm -hmm. what a godly man is. And I just want to commend you guys before I end. You guys, if, if it's never said again, I want you to know how you guys are really detoxing women and the way that we were taught to think and have given us a totally new perspective on how we are to behave as women. And it's funny, you can teach a woman how to behave and you guys are men, but you are teaching us how to behave and also Mm -hmm. what to expect in a godly man. And because of you guys and what you have taught us on the the while we're waiting calls, on the team positive calls, we have gotten to the point where we will not accept less than what you guys display. And that's a lot of responsibility to take on, but I'm speaking that into the existence of the 12 kings. You have a charge to keep, and you're doing such yeah. a great job. But I'm, I'm speaking global into the 12 kings because you guys have a responsibility to take this to other men who don't know who they are in Christ don't know why mm-hmm. they were created and are basically living in existence that God didn't call them to live. And and mm-hmm. you guys are teaching us and training us up for men. You're getting the men together and getting them ready, but you're also preparing us for them. And I thank God for what he has given you guys. And I also want to say, Keith, I am a fan of coffee and conversation. Glory to God. <laughs> I am <have> learning. <laughs> I'm telling you. I am learning 
and embarking on that. And if we had have had that teaching when we were younger, because I'm a fan of the movie theater, but right now nobody is going to take me to a show on our first <laughs> outing because I need to know what you are all about, and I can't do that if we don't conversate. Yeah. So I bless God for you guys. I love you so, so very much. And I am just looking for this to go global. We have some men that need to be taught at your knee, and God just keep you guys healthy and strong in Jesus' name. Thank you, man. Right. Yes, sir. If God is in this, it will go global. Yes, that, that's God. not a question. Yes, I don't think any of the kings are worried about that. No. Uh, we would never have even gotten this far if it wasn't global, if it wasn't God, or if God wasn't in it. He won't let us go any further until we perfect it, quote unquote, anyway. So now that you know we, we are where we are, it's only because of him that we're here. So we are doing the things that God wants us to do. Mm -hmm. And I believe that, uh, well, let me stop because I'll start preaching. <laughs> anyway, you, 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 you got, <laughs> you got yeah. to just say thank you. Thank you for the compliment on the book. I really appreciate that coming from you. You're so welcome. So welcome. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Jamila. Thank you for your comments and, and uh, you know, your declaration and your charge to us. I mean, we accept that. We, um, you know, we, we know what we've been called to do, and we don't want to just, you know, write it all down in the book. The, the, God has called us to do this in, in, the, in the personal way, and um, we we got we got work to do. We can't. I know we can't. I don't know if it's too late to change the whole entire world, but the area that God has placed us right now, we have work to do in that particular area, and we we endeavor to do that, and then, and that's why we having these type of calls. And we're not we're not just having these calls just to have them. We're having these calls to empower uh, men and women in these particular areas. We want the man and the woman to be the best that they can be in God. That's why we're talking about these different subjects. And yeah. sex is one of the greatest destroyers of relationships and individuals. Sorry. The greatest destroyer. You know, because like I said, once you cross that line, uh, uh, value is lost. Value is lost, and the enemy wants you to see. He wants you to look. He wants you to recognize your value being lost, and wants you to accept it. He wants you to accept that. Hey, the more, see, he, he wants to make it look like you know the more that we that we engage in sexual activity, you know, it's it's like a a, a notch in our belt. It's like a, a trophy uh, to sit in our case somewhere, like we've really done something, and we haven't. And then, because I think at the, at the end of the day, what it all boils down to is we are covering up some of the issues in our life and we're using sex as the medication and the antidote. And guess what? It ain't working because it was never designed to work in that capacity anyway. Anyway. So, uh, Jermaine, do you have anything uh, you want to say before we... Uh, we going to close this call out? Um, I definitely would like to thank the, the ladies who, who chimed in and just gave a female perspective from it, too. It was good to, to hear the other side, yeah. you know, the, the mm -hmm. counterpart. So that, that, that was yeah. very good. I think that was, that was very helpful to, yeah. to shine in so we have that holistic approach and see mm -hmm. both sides to the story. Yeah. Dave. Yes, sir. You got anything, sir? You got anything for us, man? man? I can't even touch that masterpiece that was just spoken. <laughs> man. You know, I, I can't touch it. Because what was said, the ladies came right in. It's just like when you get ready to go to bed at night, you know, they just layer the covers and just tuck you in. I, I can't, yeah. can't yeah. add nothing on to that. You add on something to that, you, you, you just ravel the bed. I'll, I'll leave it alone. Yeah, I got you, man. I'm with you. I'm with you there. Keith, you got anything you want to say before we end this? Mr. Murphy? 
don't, I don't even want to yeah. open my mouth behind all that. Okay, I got you. <laughs> how, how you going to follow something like that? I, I really, I don't know, man. I'll just, you know, <laughs> I was, I was done when Jermaine yeah. got finished. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, everyone. Uh, but we we thank you. We thank you for uh, making this call what it was. We we pray something has been said to truly bless you, to empower your life, something that will help you make changes if changes are necessary, or if you are going down that path of purity and you want to do it uh, right by God, that you have been empowered even more to um, to wait. Or if you may be engaged and got a, a time set that you want to hold fast to that, that particular date where you two will come together in matrimony. We pray in your strength in that area. And so, again, the topic on tonight was sex, and I think we dealt with a lot of areas. And this is just part one. Uh, next Thursday at the same time at 8.30 uh, Central Standard Time, 9.30 Eastern Standard Time is going to be sex part two. We're going to have a set, uh, 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 a different set of, of kings on the call uh, to address uh, the area of sex. And, um, you know, because like I say, we can go on and on with this topic. But we, again, just thank everyone for chiming in on this evening and, you know, just uh, providing insight and giving, um, you know, giving your perspectives, your testimonies, and, and, and declarations. You know, we, we, you can live a godly lifestyle when it comes to sex. Yes, you can. And we, and we have witnesses that have just told us that it can be done. And so, again, appreciate everyone on the call tonight. And, again, we, we pray that something has been said in this area that will truly bless you. And we, and we want to empower God's people with the truth and being transparent that God can do anything but fail. You set your mind to it, and you desire to do what is right by God he will come in and give you the strength that is needed and that is necessary. So we, we, we thank you for that. But before before we go, uh, those that are on the line, I, I, want, to, I, I want to pray for everyone uh, that's on here. And, uh, you know, we, we, we just want to close it out in prayer. Let's just say it that way. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just come to you right now first to give your name the praise, to give your name the glory, to give your honor, Father. We thank you, Lord, for all that has been said. We thank you, God, for uh, ministering to each and every one of us through your word. And through the words that were even spoken to those uh, who talked on this evening. So, God, we just thank you, God, how uh, individuals, how minds are being changed as we speak, God, how chains are falling right now, God, how prison doors are being opened in the name of Jesus. We thank you for that right now, God. And we bind every spirit right now, Father, that is not like you, every spirit of lust, oh God, spirit of bondage, oh God. We bind it right now, God. Set the captive free right now. Touch the mind, oh Father. Let that individual know that they can walk in purity, that they can walk in wholeness, O oh God, that they can walk in, in, in a way that you have designed of them. Father, no more change, God. No more, no more fetters, O oh God. Lest that you break them right now. Set the captive free, Father. God, we know that you can and we know that you will. So, God, we just pray special blessings over those that are listening. We pray, God, that your will will be done in their lives. We pray, God, that you will bless them in a mighty way, God, and give them the desires of their heart, Father, and that those desires, oh, God, that line up with your will and purpose for their life. And so, God, we just thank you right now, God, uh, Thank you for this call. Thank you for this project. Thank you, God, for allowing all of us to come together tonight. And just as Jermaine was saying, God, that we come together in unity and we're speaking 
power right now, God. We're speaking, oh, God, blessings right now in the lives of everyone under the sound of my voice. And, God, we give your name the praise. We give your name the glory. We give your name the honor, God, because you are worthy of all the praise and all the glory. And, God, we thank you. We glorify you, Father, and we magnify you. These are many blessings, oh, God, we're asking you. So in Jesus' name, thank God, and amen. Amen. Kings, thank you uh, for being on the call this evening and sharing what you have. And call us again. We thank you uh, for being on and uh, listening to what they said the Lord and, and, and what God has spoken to each and every one of us. Join us again next Thursday for part two. And as we have uh, three or four other kings, we'll be on the call. And we're just going to continue this because this is a subject that needs to be dealt with. So, again, Thank you. On behalf of 12 Kings, I'm your host, Rodney Kirkwood. Uh, and on behalf of Jermaine Connolly, Dave Wiseman, and Keith Murphy, and the 12 Kings, we say good night, and God bless you. Thank you. Amen.